Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Average at Best. As always, I'm Rob, and uh, we're back for the final two rounds of match play here at the Tournament of Champions at Riviera and Fairlawn. Um, so excited. Really, this is where things get intense as players are trying to solidify their spots onto the TV show and, and make a run at a major title and a really large prize pool. Um, it's 10 o'clock right now. We're running a little late and the pros are probably starting their first game as we speak. So let's go ahead and hop in there and get right into the bowling. Everybody, I'm here with a game four update. We're halfway through the uh, the first round of match play here this morning. Anthony Simonson actually took the lead from EJ and was undefeated in match play. He was 10 and 0 up until his last few games. Now he's had a couple losses, and EJ just went 3 and 0 his last three matches to now take the lead again by about a hundred pins. Um, 
some things to note. Belmo, um, he's had some good games today. Um, I think a 240, 250, 220 to uh, win three out of his first four matches. So he's bowling really well. Uh, he's kind of making a run at that top 17. Um, yeah, same with Tom Doherty, almost just shot 300. Uh, we got a lot of strikes out here and a lot of guys that are also struggling. So um, no no spot is secured just yet. And uh, let's go ahead and get right back into the action. So Stu, today you went uh, seven and one in match play this morning um, and jumped all the way up into the number two seed so far. Um, walk me through what happened this morning. Yeah, I got off to uh, an interesting start. I played Belmont the first game, um, and we didn't really break the lane down very well. Got a double in the tenth to win that game, so that was nice. Um, and then, like, kind of just the lanes, it felt like we were on a very. I was on a very strange cross. Like we had some, like. One pair would be two guys use urethane, the next pair nobody use urethane, so it was a lot back and forth. So it's really about surviving, I, and I did a pretty good job um, kind of winning all the games, but shooting like 210, 220, 220, 210 type of deal. So that was really good, and then when it got to the fourth game, it was time to move left, and that was when I knew I was going to be more comfortable. Um, so I, I uh, managed to get, I think, 49, 58, and then... 46 those three games so that so that that was pretty good and then the last game I caught kind of a weird lane it wasn't even the pair the right lane was no problem but the left lane caused me a lot of issues so unfortunately a 180 but overall shot 200 over for the block and won seven so it's perfect scenario really yeah um, so you've had success in this building before like you made match play last year if I remember correctly um, 
and obviously they're taking top 17 to the TV show this year. Um, what's your mindset and, and what do you like about this building that, you know, allows you to kind of make these these cuts and, and have solid performances here? Um, I just think that the lane to lane is a little more tricky and I feel like the pattern here allows me to use slower speed and bigger angles and I'm pretty good at doing that. So I think that really helps me um, with bowling well here. Okay, well, good luck the rest of the day. Um, yeah. Thank you. I'll see you later. All right, everybody, we're done with the morning round of match play here at the PBA Tournament of Champions. Um, big moves by Stu Williams, Chris Vai, uh, Jason Belmonte, Jason Sterner, all of them having huge blocks going from anywhere from plus 150 to plus 200, winning a majority of their matches. Um, Stu Williams jumping all the way up into second. Uh, Belmo now is in the top 15, so he's jumped all the way from fifth from last after round one to be in the top 15 of the tournament. And then Jason Sterner, who jumped from 12th all the way to sixth today. Um, really great bowling by those guys, and of course, EJ Tackett is now leading the tournament by 200 pins after Simonson snagged the lead for one game, and EJ took it back and has not looked back since. So. We'll be back at uh, 5 p.m. for the last round of match play, and this is where it gets really intense. This is the final round to make the top 17 to get on the TV show, and obviously you want to be in the top five to be in that final step ladder finals. So it's going to be really exciting. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Stick around for the rest of the bowling.
All right, guys, so it is the last round of match play. We are coming in with a Game 4 update here. So the way that the field looks right now, the top four is EJ Tackett, Anthony Simonson, Kyle Troop, and Matt Ogle. And the last place person right now is Patrick Hanrahan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and specifically uh, Jason Belmonte and uh, Chris Vi have been on tears today. And also, more specifically, Kyle Troop is undefeated, averaging uh, over 250 in his four matches so far. Mm -hmm. Kyle Troop has jumped from all the way outside of the top 10 to now being in third place. Yeah, and he's right on the heels of second place, right behind Anthony Simonson. So things are getting really exciting here. Um, like I said, Chris Vi was almost in last place here at match play. Now he's jumped into that top 17. So there's a lot of guys still vying for these top 17 spots, and specifically, you want to be in that top four to guarantee yourself in that final telecast. Right. Anything above like 13 or 12 going into these last few games, it's really pretty uh you're pretty safe mm -hmm. i would say like about a game or two left and you're 13th or higher it's really going to come down to like the last game for those 16th to 17th spot mm -hmm. you know it's really going to come down to the wire here yeah all right well we'll go ahead and get back to the bowling everybody yeah we'll update you guys whenever uh the final results are in yeah PBA Tour Player of the Year, E.J. Tackett. Yeah. 
So Jason, huge game there at the very end in match play in the position round to jump all the way from, I think you were in 7th seventh, seventh or 8th, to jump all the way up into 4th. So that puts you into the final telecast guaranteed. Uh, walk me through the emotions there. How did that feel knowing that you are you don't have to <laughs> win a, a first telecast, yeah. you're in the final? I mean, I honestly didn't know that that was even uh, an option. Uh, I was scrambling around with three minutes left to uh, figure out what lane, like what I wanted to do on that lane. Uh, fortunately, my uh, my ball rep Dino made a, a gut decision, uh, which was to a melee carb, and so I went and grabbed it with like a minute left. I got one shot with it. It kind of looked like it was the right thing. So at that point, I just wanted to bowl a good game. I knew I was on a show, so like the emotions were in check. Uh, it probably if I would have thought about how far I could have got, it might have got me tricked up. Yeah. But I just focused on the process and committed to what I was going to do with uh, my balls and my choices. And, uh, you know, bowled a good game. Got a Brooklyn there early to keep uh, the string alive. Uh, two trip nines. I mean, in this game, you got to have those connectors. And it was like just a perfect, you know, storm. So. Yeah, and starting today, you were actually in 12th place, mm -hmm. and um, you managed to jump all the way from 12th up to 4th, obviously. Specifically, this last block, I don't think you had a game under, like, 2 teen or something. Uh. Um, can, <laughs> yeah, can, 2 13, yeah. Yeah, can you walk me through what, yeah. what you were seeing on the lanes? Because you had arguably the most consistent set out mm. of anybody today. That's crazy. Like, I didn't even realize. I knew they were hard. I did not realize that. I just kept seeing, like, Oh, another 220, another loss. Oh, another 210, another loss. So, like, my head was so wrapped up in that that I wasn't even looking around. I was just, like, again, just this is what I see. This is the picture. I'm committing to it. I know I'm, I got the pocket. You know, like, I'm not bowling 250s, but you know, I'm going to win one of these games is what I kept telling myself. So, like, I was being as positive as I could. But, you know, those 220s and never they were just, like, kicking me, kicking me. But, uh, I, I mean, I guess just getting ahead of it where earlier I got very fortunate to throw that urethane ball for three games and bowled a big number. Uh, then I kind of got behind it, whereas this time urethane ball looked like crap. Uh, wasn't great as option. I could have went with other options. And then so it kind of forced me to get into that other zone. And at that point I kind of knew the progression because I had seen it four or five times now. And uh, so I just committed to it and um, got a couple breaks at the right time. Yeah, and last year was arguably, again, your best year that you've had on the PBA Tour. Sure. And um, how can you use that kind of momentum to hopefully, or how did you use that momentum to hopefully put yourself in position this week to maybe go out and win a major? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you learn from your mistakes. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of work in, in the gym and, you know, on the lanes uh, with the bowl U process. Uh, so that's been very vital to my success. Uh, so, you know, kind of having a formula uh, and a, you know, like a pre-shot, like this, the, the smallest things, you know, but keeping it simple, um, making better decisions when I need to, learning from my mistakes, uh, it's, it's been huge. Uh, and granted, you know, you're never guaranteed it's going to work, but if you buy into it, like anything's possible, I've, you know, I've come to realize. So um, I'd say that's probably the biggest two things is the gym work, uh, the bowl use stuff, and uh, just a little bit of luck. I mean, you got to have a little bit of luck out here, you know, against these guys that, you know, they're the best in the world. Yeah, uh, and last year, obviously, with your world championship performance, you gained a lot of fans out there, myself included. Thank it was an awesome performance. Uh, what do you want to say for the fans out there um, for the telecast coming this Sunday? Well, tune in, you guys. Uh, looking forward to bowling one show and hopefully three wins to get there for the end. So uh, appreciate all the love, and uh, we'll see if we can get it done. All right, good luck and great bowling today. Thank you. Thank you. So, Anthony, you're sitting at the number two seed, and you had a really big last game there to jump yourself ahead of Matt Ogle. Uh, can you walk me through what happened there in that position round? Uh, you know, I kind of assumed that I needed to bowl a big game. Uh, Matt got into a ball that just kind of seemed to open up the lane for him, uh, which is something that not many of us had that, that evening block. Um, it's kind of a, an idea that, you know, Marshall was doing throughout the week. Uh, I did it to end the block this morning. I uh, bowled, I believe, 230 as well, um, and just kind of committed to throwing two different balls, just more or less they uh, – just kind of a comfort thing to only just use one and uh but no i made a couple of good shots there early on uh, and then it got a little interesting with ej and matt towards the end uh ej throwing out the window and uh thankfully rolled the head pin out of the five pin to give me opportunity to uh still beat matt uh so you bowled a good game and i uh, can't really complain with that yeah, um, and you had the uh, best record in match play this week. Not to mention, I'm pretty sure that you've made a, you've made the cut in every single tournament so, thus far this year. Uh, can you walk me through what's been the secret to success this year? How you've been able to be so consistently in the running? 
Uh, you know, I just feel like I've got a good understanding of the balls that I've been using and haven't really been uh, adding too many, you know, crazy pieces like shooting for the stars. There's there's some weeks out here where, you know, we are looking for just a little bit different shape. Um, so I've been able to use kind of similar balls throughout the, uh, the most part of the most part of the week um, and then uh, just a little bit of practice at the beginning of the season I think is really paying off uh, I'm generally not a big practice person uh, so that that extra two or three weeks of even just getting five or six games in a day uh, really helped out all right um, well uh, is there anything you want to say to the Anthony Simonson fans out there about the telecast this Sunday I uh, will see you on Sunday hopefully with the win yeah Oh, great bowling all week. Thank you for the interview. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, everybody, that's a wrap for match play here at the Tournament of Champions. We officially have our top 17 players for the Tournament of Champions telecast. Huge kudos to Jason Sterner there on a big last game to completely jump out of the third telecast into the final telecast. That was arguably the most impressive one-game performance of the whole day. Yeah, he uh, was originally in seventh place going into that position round, and clutched out a nice uh, 240, 250 game mm -hmm. to uh, get himself to jump both Andrew Anderson, Jason Momonti, um, and Kyle Troop mm -hmm. got himself into that four seed. So in order of the telecasts, we got the first telecast being Patrick Hanrahan, Francois Lavoie, Tim Grundler, Wes Malott, and Christopher Prather. And then we have for the second telecast, Tom Smallwood, Chris Vai, Stuart Williams, and Jake Peters. For the third telecast, we have Marshall Kent, Andrew Anderson, Jason Momonti, and Kyle Troop. And then for the fourth and final telecast to be held on Sunday at 12 o'clock, it'll be Jason Sterner versus the winner of everything else, Matt Ogle, Anthony Simonson, and EJ Tackett mm. as the number one seed. And he has been the number one seed for the greater part of the entire week. Yeah, and of course, uh, EJ and Anthony, number one and two, They've been the best players so far this year. Anthony Simonson making the cut at every tournament. EJ winning three out of the five uh, titles this year. I mean, what more can you say? It's going to be an awesome telecast. And yeah, thank you everybody so much for watching, liking, subscribing. Be sure to check out the Patreon down below. As always, it is the best way to support us other than watching, liking, and subscribing. <laughs> um, so thank you again. Um, this week has been awesome so far, and... Uh, we're excited to see how uh, how it all comes to a conclusion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah again, thank you guys so much. Uh, yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Peace, Peace out. out.